I've done quite a bit to the trailer. This thing is slowly but surely coming along. I got some brand new wheels on here. Well, not wheels, uh, brand new shoes. Got these uh, SunTech HD Plus. These are 14 ply tires and they literally look like tractor trailer tires. I mean, these things are beast. They're all steel radials. You can see it right there. These are overkill, man. These are rated for like 3,200 pounds a piece. So this trailer should be good for like over 12,000 pounds. And uh, the GBW is just over 7,000 on it. So mad overkill on the tires. But from uh, what you guys recommended, people said to go way overkill on the tires. You can't go wrong by doing that because the sidewalls are so hardcore and firm that it makes um, the trailer sway like a lot less. They're supposed to drive a lot nicer. And then I also painted these center caps. They were covered in surface rust and that just makes them look like crap. So I painted them in this gun metal with a little bit of a metal flake in there. Little stuff like that just makes things look so much better. I also took this fender. If you guys remember, there was like a dent and some little sc scuffs and stuff here. I just took a, an adjustable and straightened it out. And it looks pretty good now. And it was also stained, like the aluminum was a little discolored. So I took a scotch bright and just went over it, kind of gave it a nice brushed look. But just little touches like that make it look like not a piece of crap. It really looks a lot better. Uh, I cleaned the whole thing. And man, that took a while. I spent five hours cleaning the outside of this and cleaning the scum off of the roof. Man, the roof was just, it was disgusting, dude. There was tons of like mold and probably just primarily mold. I think this thing sat under trees. And uh, really, I think this thing has been sitting for most, most of its recent life anyway, and it, it just needed it really bad. This trailer roof, man, it's just covered in scum, mold and shit. This little, I don't know, like eighth of the roof, took about 20 minutes. Got a lot of work to do on this thing. did this whole thing the other way and my dad just came out and showed me this attachment what the f just wasted so much time this is awesome I went up to Mechanical Hulks, we did the tires, and I also got this thing inspected. Matt is um, able to do that, so he inspected the trailer for me. And you'll notice the tongue of this trailer looks like brand new. That's because sanded it down, repainted it. Uh, didn't do like a crazy amazing job on it, but it sure looks a hell of a lot better than it did. Uh, put a brand new breakaway system on it. That is this cable right here. So like this cable hooks up to your truck. And if for some reason the trailer falls off, this, uh, come on, you bastard. Man, that thing is freaking tight. Well, it's, there we go. It, it yanks this out and uh, automatically puts the brakes on the trailer so that, you know, you don't have a, a rogue trailer just flying away. I also got a new um, pin for the hitch here and I put a cable on it. And it's a coated cable too, so this should never rust. All this stuff is stainless steel. It's bolted right there. So when you take this off, you can just leave that hang and you'll never lose it because there was not one with this when I bought it. Probably because this is, this is definitely one of those items that people lose on a regular basis. I tried to wire this up really nice, loomed everything, and uh, just trying to make it really nice. Now on the inside, I did some stuff too. You guys remember this AC balance was like pea yellow. It just looked super crappy. Well, I pulled it down and I noticed 
I don't know if you guys remember, but the, um, the ceiling was kind of sagging on the one side. You could really see it when you looked at it from this side. When I pulled the balance off, there's four bolts that go through the roof to the air conditioning unit, and all four of them were loose, dude. Every single one of them. Uh, when I tightened those up, it pulled the ceiling up and everything, and then uh, I pulled all this stuff apart and painted this. It's called Slate Gray. Put new filters in the AC system, and the best part is, the best part is I tested the AC and the heat, and they both work. So that's a huge come up. I was really worried about that. Um, I just kind of took a risk when I was buying the trailer. It works though, and it's, dude, the AC is like ultra cold. So I'm really happy about that. Oh, and also, um, my pop put this in up here. So there was an abandoned box up here. Uh, my pop ran wires up here, and I've got another outlet. I didn't even ask him to do it. I came out here the one day, and it was just in there. It's the, uh, it's the great thing about dads, man. Dads are awesome, especially my dad. He's always doing stuff like that. Uh, what else do we got? I know I've just been doing like little stuff like that. It's been a lot of like driving back and forth up to Matt's place. Matt is about an hour away um, putting the tires on, and I had some issues with I had to get the trailer weighed uh, because there was no unladen weight. The All of the uh, the stickers and stuff on the tongue with the specs were worn away. You couldn't read them or anything, so I had to get it weighed at a weigh station. The trailer weighs like 40 300 pounds. I think, I think total weighs 4,300 pounds. So I can put like 2,500, 3,000 pounds worth of stuff in this thing. And uh, then it would be at its maximum weight, you know, what it's rated for. I had to do that. And then I was driving up to Matt's. I had to do it twice because we had some issues with the title and stuff. But everything's good now. All the painting and stuff is over with. So you might be wondering what this giant roll of thing is on the ground. Well, that's the floor. So I've got the floor. I've also got a, another giant roll like that. I've got all the wrap for the walls. Um, this thing is sitting on the floor, the little tailgate flap thing, because the hinge that was on that, this is the thing that goes on the end of the tailgate and kind of flips over and makes it so that you have a smoother transition to the asphalt. The hinge, these really long hinges, it was totally messed up. So I got a new hinge. It was 50 bucks shipped. I think it was 50 bucks. Now today what I want to do is going to be a giant undertaking. I want to rip up the floors, rip out the wall, and I want to rip out the benches and the cabinets and everything. Basically just gonna take everything out of here and uh, first things first, get the floor in. I think that's gonna be the most difficult part of this project and I can't really move forward with anything on the inside until I do that because you know it's the base of everything. So, <laughs> shit man, let's just, I'll probably time lapse this and just rip everything out of here. I've got some really cool stuff, man. I got a lot of products, man. We'll hop to the product table and uh, I'll show you some of the new stuff I got. I got some LEDs that I wanna run like all the way around the cabin. I got some nice LEDs that are gonna go under the bench here, and I'm also gonna put them in the back. And I think with the light illuminating inward this way, on both sides and in the front, you know, this thing is gonna be a super bright trailer. Some people were saying that it might be a little bit too dark with the dark walls and stuff, but I saw some pictures of uh, trailers that did have either black or gray, like dark gray walls with really bright LEDs, and it looks good, man. So I think we're gonna be cool with that, plus the ceiling, I'm going to leave that white and that's going to be nice and reflective and keep things bright in here. All right, I got all the walls and everything out for the most part anyways. I got them laid out here, and uh, you can see the contrast of the colors. So it must be something that has to do with exposure to light that changes the color of uh, whatever this material is. It's like a thin plastic on top of plywood because and you can see major contrast for the areas that were covered up. But we'll be covering all that stuff up. Get the light fixtures out here, that one piece of E-Track, some fluorescent bulbs. I'll probably replace those with LED bulbs. Uh, the trim and stuff for the top and then the uh, dividers for the panels, kick panels, all that stuff. It came out pretty easy. This is the piece that covers the spring up here. There's going to be LED lights back there. And uh, here's what the walls look like without the trim and stuff on them. They look good. I mean, I don't see any like rusting or weird issues or anything. And everything came out for the most part pretty easy. There were a couple of fasteners like down low that were... Uh, I don't think the holes are stripped. I think the screws themselves, the threads were stripped off of them. But other than that, for the most part, pretty much all of them came out no problem. Uh, it's just very time consuming. So I can't get these walls out. And there's also, there's walls behind 
they, they run down the wall there. Uh, I can't get those out until we get out the bench and that cabinet up there. So that's gonna be the next order of business. Man, I feel like I'm working on an apartment. There's so much space in here. Got all this stuff. It was pretty difficult getting that bench and uh, overhead compartment out of there. These two boards over here, there's like this clear, I don't know if that's a rain guard or what, but it's like sticky. There's a glue on it. And uh, that was really difficult to, cut, to get off and I didn't want it to rip. So I was really gentle with it. Luckily, everything's cool though. Got the breaker box out of there. And um, at this point, we can peel the floor up. I think it's gonna come up pretty easy. I, yeah, I think it's, it's just gonna peel right up. Um, unfortunately, it's getting pretty late right now. And uh, you can see it's pretty dark. And uh, also, it's supposed to rain for the next couple days. So what I'm gonna do is bring all the stuff inside and wait until the rain passes. And then I will rip the floor out. And that's probably the next, the first thing that I'll do in terms of putting things back in will be putting the new floor in and uh, I wanna put some other electrical stuff in, switches and all, uh, wire some new LEDs and stuff. I wanna show you guys the parts I got. So I got some pretty cool stuff for this. It should be pretty sweet. All right, we've got a nice 90 degree day to rip this floor up. I have uh, all of the D-rings are pulled out, all the trim and everything, as far as I know, we're ready to just, it should just peel right up. Hopefully it's not a pain in the ass, but uh, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. I have all the stuff in the garage so that if it starts raining, you can see the ground's kind of wet. It's been like raining off and on. And uh, this is interesting. So the walls were like really warped. And for whatever reason, like leaving them in the trailer for a couple days, like straightened them out. I mean, they're still not perfect, obviously, but they were really, really warped. But all these ones in the back are, they're pretty damn good, man. I didn't have them laying on the ground or anything. They were up against the wall. So it's kind of, I, I'm not really sure why that happened, but uh, I'm not, I'm not upset about it. All right, the floor is ripped up, man. And unfortunately, that was probably the easy part. So now I've got all this stuff to get up. And that's gonna be a major pain in the ass. Luckily, my pop's helping me, so we can make this go a little bit faster, but I think it's important to get this stuff up because I don't want the new floor to be lumpy. And uh, it'll also give a good, a good base for adhesion and just, you know, knock off any of the loose parts and stuff like that, but. A lot of work. Man, that was a lot of work, but it's okay because the floors are now prepped for the new floor. I'm gonna have to sweep these up. Uh, there's like dust everywhere. Look at all this stuff. It's like, it looks like sand. There's so much of it though, man. I, a bunch of it went down the crack too. I seriously wonder like how many pounds of glue and wood me and my pop sanded off the ground. Up here, the glue is like super thick, but the whole goal is really is uh, to keep, have it nice and smooth. And I think we're there. So whew. probably look crazy right now, but that's all right, man. So now uh, next thing I want to do is put the walls in and then I'm going to put the floor in. Gotten quite a bit done. You can see, started getting the walls up. And man, this has been a lot of work. These walls, wrapping the walls takes a lot of time. Like these big ones, the one wall took like, like an hour and a half. Uh, the, getting the wrap on there is really not that easy. Uh, you can see though, it did a really good job of hiding the cracks. 
it really, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. You can see the border up top. You can see the overlap a little bit. This uh, carbon fiber wrap was like a slightly transparent. So, I mean, I guess there's no way I could have predicted that, but realistically, uh, it's kind of hard to see. It looks really good, I think. I uh, evened all these out. The borders were not even because I noticed, like you can see, the boards, they're not even. I had to use the holes that were already existing, so uh, I couldn't move them up or down to match. So I was able to trim uh, the border to make it nice. But that came out really, really nice. I'm just super happy. Oh, we got a, uh, my pop put this outlet in back here. So this, there was already an outlet here, but now I've got the USB ports. That's going to be really handy. Painted the uh, box black and then put the, the black faceplate on there. Cleaned up the aluminum diamond plate. And then a uh, light got up there. I put in upgraded uh, bulbs in there. There were 34 watt bulbs. I put in 40 watts. They should be a little bit brighter. And then this box, my pop put in also. So I've got three switches here. This one is going to be the 12 volt, which is like the power uh, when you don't have a generator hooked up. One of them will do uh, the little dome lights. And then the other one is going to be an LED strip. It's going to go all the way around the border. And that's going to be like a multi um, changing color kind of deal where you can you know switch the colors and all uh, then we wired in another LED strip right here those things are really nice and bright you see we did all the wiring and everything for that I'm just gonna have to uh, you know make the trim and stuff fit so that you know this wire uh, will be nice and hidden and uh, well, I have three more of these to put up I'm gonna put uh, one on each side in the back on these little skinny panels right here. I'm just gonna put them one one up and down one up and down there and then one up and down back here. Oh and I also I switched out the tail lights with these LEDs. They're maxima um, tail lights. Clear style. I just think that's a nice updated look over the uh, the old ones that were in there. Little stuff like that. It's coming together. I got this other wall here that I'm about to put in and um, I got some nice nice pieces of flat aluminum that I'm gonna use for trim to cover up uh, the gaps around the door and everything. And, uh, you know, then I'm just going to have to go around to the other side and do the red portion, the one with the red border. So it'll be kind of like a red, white, and blue theme. Got to do the front up here. I'm hoping that the rest of this goes a lot quicker because, you know, we were, it, it, I can't do this by myself, really. Wrapping the walls is definitely a two-man job. So me and my pop are kind of learning on this half. And so hopefully the other half will be a lot quicker. And I haven't really been filming too much of this just because I'm, I'm trying to get it done, man. I want to use this thing. Um, I'm getting ready to go out to Badlands. I'll be at Badlands, um, I think it's June 11th and 12th. Whatever days the weekend are, Saturday and Sunday. Um, you guys are gonna have to excuse my voice too. My allergies are freaking killing me. It's, uh, it's pretty bad. The garage is completely packed with stuff. What else is new? Uh, that's part of the reason I wanna get this trailer done so fast also because um, you guys can't see it, but on the other side of the, uh, in this other bay over here, this is just filled with trailer stuff, trailer walls, trim, all kinds of stuff like that. The, the, the bench, everything. So it's, uh, this is, a, this is a big project. Um, but, uh, I think as far as work goes, that's probably going to be it for this video. That was a lot of work uh, that went into this. I know I'm doing like time lapses and not really showing details and stuff, but that was a lot of work doing the floors and even just half of the walls, all the wiring and everything. It's just really time consuming. I'm not going to lie though. It's, it's really exciting. Uh, I've never done really anything like this. I've never had a, a serious trailer and I've never renovated one. And it's pretty exciting to see it come together. And uh, as I'm putting all this stuff in, I did buy a lot of like little things. Some of the stuff you guys recommended. And um, I have some of it in these boxes here. So I figured before we wrap this up, I'll show you some of the stuff that I'm going to be putting into the trailer. All right, let's start with this big ass box. It's pretty heavy too. Big ass boxes. Everybody loves big ass boxes. Yeah, these are heavy. All right, I guess we really only need to open one of these, but this is some trailer basics 101. Oh yeah. Come on out of there, you bastard. Ooh, look at that. Nice spare tire rim. And it even has the red, white, and blue theme going on, which I don't know how that worked out, but I found this tire or a rim and I saw it had the uh, the pinstriping on the outside. So that's going to match the, the color scheme of the trailer also. 
And uh, I think it's just clean. Everybody has black wheels, I feel like. And this will contrast. I'm going to hang this on the wall in the trailer. So it'll contrast against the wall. I think that'll look pretty cool. Uh, I just got a second one in this box. The reason I got two, that was actually my buddy Matt's uh, Mechanical Hulk. That was his idea because each side of the trailer has got two wheels. If you run over something crazy on one side and it takes out one, like both wheels on the one side, what are you going to do? So um, I think two spares is actually a great idea. So I'm still in search of spare tire tires. Um, but I have the rims on lockdown. At worst, I can take the uh, the takeoff tires and put them on there for now. Uh, but I definitely think this is something that's necessary. All right, now moving on to some more horsepower mods. These are these are really uh, quite underwhelming in the excitement category, but I figure I'll show them to you guys anyways. Uh, that paddle handle, door handle on the door is trashed. It's uh, Somebody tried to break into there at some point and the lock doesn't even work. The guy lost the keys and everything. So I, I bought this replacement one. These are pretty inexpensive. It was under 30 bucks. And uh, somebody told me, they were like, oh dude, they all come with the same keys. Like anybody can get into your trailer. Uh, I think the big deal with these is, you know, it's like a, it's just like a theft deterrent. If somebody really wants to get into any trailer, they're gonna get into it. So I also have a deadbolt on the door and I'm gonna put a, um, a M134A minigun behind the door that is uh, triggered by a tripwire. Uh, if anybody does break into the trailer. So this is really just the first line of defense, kind of uh, more so the door handle than anything. Seriously though, something like this is, is not really meant, at least in my mind, to uh, be the main line of security for the trailer. Uh, the low jack and um, tracking devices are probably gonna be more effective than this. Next, we've got this extremely exciting cup holder. Well, actually it's not a cup holder. It's the little like uh, hatch, door hatch that goes and in, in underneath the cabinet where the power line runs out of the trailer, uh, it was blown out. The one that was in there, there was no, there was no lid on it, and uh, it didn't have like these nice little flappy things. Which I like this. You can put the wire through here, and then close it, and the wire goes, you know, right here. It kind of, I guess, like to, you know, help with insulation if you got the AC and stuff on. And it's just nice to have like a closed unit. Uh, you know, if it, if, without the door there, I don't know. I just thought it was nice. It was like eight bucks, whatever. Then we got these sweet ass LEDs. So these are for the dome lights. I just kind of uh, took a shot with these ones because I had so many diodes and they're not bad. I, I installed them already. I tried them out at nighttime. They're, they're really not bad. They're definitely brighter than the OEM bulbs and they're that nice like clean white color as, as opposed to like the yellow color. So I think that's a nice cheap update. Makes the uh, interior dome lights a little bit nicer. And we've got this bag filled with 100 little lights. These are the indicators that are gonna go around the outside of the trailer I had put these into uh, my buying video showing the stuff I wanted to buy for the trailer and um, there were like 500 freaking reviews on these things and they were outstanding. So it was like 20 lights for 20 bucks. So I'm really skeptical. I'm going to RTV the crap out of these things. Yama bond, Yama bond them. And um, hopefully, you know, I think leaks is the number one enemy of these things. If I can seal them really well, should be nice. I got the reds and the ambers and they're just nice and slim. And I think it'll update the look of the outside of the trailer. So this will go really nicely with those um, crystal clear LED taillights that I put on there. Now these, these are all like little items. It's like, oh, what is this crap? You know, if I didn't know I, before I got the trailer, like if you're not a trailer person, it's like some just stupid stuff. But uh, I noticed on the tailgate or uh, the ramp in the back, there's no bumpers. There's like holes. You can see they used to be there and you can actually see like vibration marks of where they were. Uh, but all the bumpers on the bottom of the tailgate are gone. So like the purpose of these is they come down on the bottom of, the, of that, the, the loading ramp and they protect the door and give a little bit of cushion. So it was like $10 for a four pack of those. So I'll be bolting those on. And this isn't anything new because I did show you that outlet in the back, but I'm re replacing pretty much all the outlets with these um, USB style ones. They're just cleaner looking. I like it that it's black, so it's gonna match the inside of the trailer. Get the USBs, which is huge for like my camera equipment and stuff. Just a nice upgrade, bring it up to date. And this is probably the coolest thing of all of these parts. This is the LED strip that I'm gonna put around the outside of the trailer. It's pretty trick. You can see all the little diodes in here. And uh, there's like a little control box. Plugs into two different strips. Each one of these strips is like 30 feet long, I think. I don't know. It's enough to go around the entire perimeter of the trailer though. And then it has like, even has a little remote here. So it's like, I'm going to be watching TV. You can change the colors. You can make it go to like the beat of music and stuff like that. I don't know that I'm going to be doing any of that stuff, but I can at least change the colors. You can just do white and, you know, give a nice like ambient light. But I think something like that 
that's really a trick if you're just like chilling back at camp at nighttime. You can put the glowing lights on and stuff, and you know it's unnecessary, but definitely cool. And dude, this was only like 12 bucks. All right, and the last stuff I have is in this big ass box. I want to give a huge shout out to Rocky Mountain ATV because they watched my video and they hit me up and they were like, dude, we saw you were doing a trailer and we've got some stuff by Rider Cargo. And uh, if you want to try it out, let us know. So they sent me some stuff here and it's all stuff that I probably would have ended up getting anyways for the trailer. Stuff like this, a paper, <clears throat> a paper towel holder. This is huge, man. Like uh, every time I go to the dunes or any riding trip, the best trailers have stuff like this. Paper towels, dude. Like how do you... How many times have you been on a trip and you need paper towels? You're working on a bike in the trailer or whatever. It's just paper towels you can't go without. And then it's got this tray in the top, probably like for oils or cleaners I can put up there. I feel like it's the perfect size to put oils right up here. That's pretty convenient. That's more than likely what I'll end up using it for. Then they sent me a helmet um, hanger. So it's just a basic aluminum hanger. Bolt that into the wall. Can uh, hang a helmet on there. That's pretty important for, you know, I'm building it for a riding trailer. And then I've got a spare tire hanger. So this will go with those two rims. I'll be able to bolt them to the wall. And the last piece is the coolest one. If I can get this out of here. This is really nice stuff. So these are made of all aluminum. This is... It's a helmet shelf, so you can put two helmets in here, and then you've got the bar down here. You can hang all your riding gear. So I can hook this up on the wall, and basically I have enough for all of my riding gear. I can put two helmets in here, then I've got the helmet hanger, so I've got enough for three helmets, which is great because, you know, when you go on trips and stuff, usually you're bringing your buddies and stuff. So I have enough for three people. I can get another one of those hooks, and then I can have enough for four people. So let's see how this works here. See, put your helmet just like that. It's not gonna go any place. That's pretty nice, man. It's little stuff like this that really makes, you know, trailers cool. It's like, you can really customize them and make them the way you want. I think that's why this is so exciting. I never thought I'd be excited about making a trailer, but all of these parts are gonna make it really nice. So again, I wanna give Rocky Mountain ATV a huge shout out. You guys probably know about Rocky Mountain ATV. You guys can check them out. They've got everything from a for ATV, side-by-sides, dirt bikes, and trailers. They've got all kinds of stuff, so. I really appreciate what they did. All right, guys, well, I appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the trailer videos. This is probably gonna end up being more of like a before and after type series uh, because there's just so much work and it's so time consuming. And this is also kind of like off of what I typically post, but I know a lot of guys were asking about it. So uh, I wanted to show you guys what's going on with it. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. Also, if you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. And I will see you guys in the next video. If I don't see you until then, have a great Memorial Day weekend. Peace out.